Hi, and welcome to Paper Root Scrapbooking. I'm Nadine, and today I'm sharing with you all of the layouts that I completed during the month of May 2022. Okay, so in spite of my lack of uh, videos in the month of May, I have been quite prolific in my scrapbooking. Uh, part of the reason for that is that I spent a lot of time scrapbooking away from home, so there was no recording happening. But I'm here today to share with you everything that I completed during the month of May, and I apologize for it coming in late. Um, the last of my family from Grandma's funeral has just left, and today is what, June 6th? So it has been a long week. <laughs> um, so I'm just getting around to this now. I hope that's okay. And uh, I hope you enjoy the video. So here is the first layout I did during the month of May. Um, I started my May scrapbooking at um, a weekend crop in Erskine, Alberta um, with Sherry's Scrap and Shop. And I spent um, National Scrapbook Day weekend there with um, my mom and my friend Toby and my friend Gail. And it was a great time had by all. Um, so when I went to that weekend, I took with me a bunch of um, close to my heart uh, project kits, scrapbooking workshop on the go kits, as well as a class kit from a previous um, crop and create. So this was the first layout I did. It was a close to my heart kit called Miracle. And it came with these um, chipboard embellishments that had resist on them so you just ink them up and it resists in certain spots to make the white show up so that was cool um, surprise secret um, I completed this layout these circles were not part of the layout until I dropped a black ink pad right here and I had a big black ink blot there and I for a while just put it away <laughs> Kind of annoyed with myself and then after I was finished with this uh, kit I just punched out some circles from the leftover pieces and covered up that ink blot and then just made the circles into kind of a part of the layout so now you can't even tell right okay so that was the first one and it was a double pager um, and then the second one I did with that kit was this one and it is also from the Miracle Collection from Close to My Heart, old, old collection. I don't know when from. The paper was still thin, so way back when. Um, and it, again, with the resist, had this big, these were quite common, I think, back then, these um, big pieces, die cut pieces. And I added some little touches. I put little mini brads in here um, to use them up and some buttons. This was not part of the kit. This was from a, I think it was Jelly Bean Soup sticker, puffy, no, foam sticker title sh sheet. So that's where I got my title from and I just inked it up in a coordinating color because I wanted some pink on there because she had some pink there. And now this originally, I think in the kit was supposed to be a two page layout and was supposed to go something like that, but I, had two single photos that had two different stories so I just made it into two single page layouts so again with the resist piece oh sorry that not that pieces and then I added some of the some more of those foam from that same um, from this foam sheet of jelly bean soup I used a title from I think these are just American craft thickers I think and then these um, metal pieces also were with the collection kit. So got those and the buttons were from that kit as well. Um, I don't remember which floss I used or twine or whatever. I think it's waxy flax actually from close to my heart. And then the brads also were close to my heart and were in the kit. The yeah, I think that's it. And then this was a sticker and this was a sticker from a different collection that I just thought went with it. So I added them. Um, and then the next kit that I worked on that same weekend was this one. 
it was another close to my heart workshop on the go and I had already cut out the um, die cut pieces from with my Cricut that came with the cut files came with the kit um, like it told you how to cut them and with which cartridge and whatever because it was back in the cartridge days so this is an older one too I think I believe this one was called the hopscotch collection and it came with these cute little flares I did some stamping um, the sticker pieces oddly are from a um, basic gray sticker sheet also called hopscotch but from a different year I think one was like 2011 one was 2009 and then on the background I also did some stamping with the stamp that came with this kit this border sticker came from the basic gray collection and then the rub-ons which I see are not sticking totally great I'm gonna have to fix those are from uh, I think they were like Daisy D's or something I had left over actually from my grandson's um, baby album stuff so that was the hopscotch one from close to my heart that I did during that crop this was also from the hopscotch again with the jelly bean soup um, I think do I have it yeah so it was this jelly bean soup foam stickers you make me so happy so miso soup I guess and um, the stickers again from the basic gray collection but the papers are from the close to my heart collection both called hopscotch and so cute and then here's another one from that same hopscotch collection mixing the basic gray with the um, close to my heart and it also turned out pretty cute so that's that and then I moved on to a third uh, close to my heart kit and did some more stamping so here's the stamping 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 so proud of myself for that I hardly ever do stamping uh, leftover rub-ons again from my grandson's baby album stuff uh, stamping here stamping here this collection I think was called chalk it up and it's actually meant to be a school collection so for this one I was kind of keeping an eye on some of the other like online challenges for National Scrapbook Day and this one was um, scrapbook something with uh, like a themed collection but do it not in that theme so this was a school collection and I did baby so that was kind of the challenge there and I think it turned out really cute you can't really even tell that it's a school collection even though we still use like the notebook edge and uh, it definitely has like a chalk book theme, or chalk book, chalkboard theme to it, but yeah, I really like how it came out. And I had, again, I had already cut out the cut files for this one. It was just sitting on my wire rack waiting to be used. So another double pager there. And I think that was all I did with the chalkboard collection. Um, then, oh, chalk it up, it was called. Then I did this one, and this was the kit, that was the same weekend, still at uh, Sherry's Scrap and Shop Crop uh, out at Erskine, and this one was a um, class kit that I had purchased from Crop and Create. I didn't attend the class, but after the class was over, they had some kits for sale, and this was one of them, and I really loved the look of this. And it turned out so beautifully. So this was a class kit by Nicole Noasad, and it was about paper weaving. And I really like that she didn't cut all the papers the same size. Like if you look, they're not the same width. So that was really fun, and I think I'm gonna try and do that again because it turned out really good. And from that same class kit, again about using all the paper. Um, this one came with the cut file already done for you so this big cut file here and in the original there was only photos on this side but I added a photo to this side as well but here's another double pager from a class kit and yeah this one was really cute too lots of um, like using your cut aparts and stuff in this class kit so I really liked that as well that. Then when I got home, I um, spent a couple of evenings doing some other challenges for 
the Scrap Squad, SG Scrap Squad, uh, Scrapbook Generation Scrap Squad, I guess. And this one was a sketch I used from Scrapbook Generation. It's a free one. I'll see if I can find it again and link it below. And I wanted to scrapbook this cute little Tigger outfit, but I didn't want it to be like, bam, Tigger, everything's orange. So I took a sheet of paper that I had purchased a long time ago at the dollar store that had Tigger in it, and I cut strategically into it um, into the square to make squares. And then the rest I took, this was a button sheet that had Tigger stuff on it, so like an embellishment pack from EK Success. And so I used the colors from these buttons because they were Tigger themed um, to um, choose the colors of paper in the background. And I found these papers in a six by six Stampin' Up paper pad. And so aside from the orange Tigger one, all the rest are from the same Stampin' Up pad. What else did I do here? And so that's how I chose my uh, papers was basically basing them on these buttons. Actually, I think the purple one was from a different pa paper pad, Doodlebug. And then I these um, epoxy stickers were also from a Tigger themed embellishment pack that I had from EK Success. Not sure where these are from. They were loose in my Disney box. These were old, old, old Mrs. I, I think they were also EK Success, but back in the Mrs. Grossman days where you like unroll the roll of stickers and um, they were like six by 12 sheets roughly, but they were um, clear. So I mounted my sticker, my clear sticker. I, this is a trick I use with older stuff all the time. I mounted my sticker on white cardstock. I fussy cut around the edge of the clear part. Um, and now I have uh, like a border sticker. So that's where the stars are from. Um, American Crafts. Um, I think happiness is this font and I think this is actually a close to my heart foam thicker. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so that was that. I really like how it turned out too, how it's like Tigger themed but not like in your face Tigger. Um, this is another one that was a sketch challenge but I didn't have enough photos for the double page. So I basically took this part of the sketch and went with that, but also took these strips on the end. So I did another six with a six by six paper pad again, and I did, um, this is like six by six, but it's eight inches. So I just like layered the stripes on top of each other. So if you ever you're looking to like expand something in a six by six size, always look for a stripe because you can line up the lines to make it look like it's not cut up. Although this one's starting to peel, so I'm gonna have to glue that down. Um, let's see, what else? So this was a Cartabella uh, paper pad, I believe, and a uh, sticker sheet. They co did coordinate. Um, this is falling off. So before I put that aside, let me just glue that down so it doesn't go flying away on me. I hate when I find little things like that in my craft room and I'm like, uh oh, where did that come from? It's a mystery. Are we falling apart over here too? Okay, good to know. Oops. Okay, so, and this was a comparison um, page. So this is my granddaughter on the left and my grandson on the right and his mom, their mom, had posted photos after Amelia was born about like photos where they kind of look similar um, as new. So this is a newborn photo and a one week old photo. Amelia Quinton, Amelia Quinton. So I thought that was kind of cute. And that's how I used that sketch. That was also for the SG Scrap Squad NSD challenges. And then the following weekend, I went to a um, another crop. Uh, we call it the condo crop and it's basically uh, my friend Marg lives in a, um, an apartment style condo where you ha they have a party room that you can rent and so once a month uh, she rents out the party room and we all go scrapbook together and it's kind of nice to just scrapbook among friends. Now same friend Marg she uh, found this album in her um, 
scrapbook inventory and wanted to part with it and then overheard me talking about Quentin's first birthday being Dr. Seuss themed. So she offered it to me and I made good use of it. So I took this with me to the condo crop and this is what I worked on. And I did batch scrapbooking for this. So I'd already tucked the photos in so I knew which photos were going on each page. And I don't know where this is from, but I'm gonna guess it's from EK Success because some of the patterned papers that look like this were also from EK Success, okay? So this is an eight by eight album, but it's got kind of a unique shape to it, which I love. And I just wanted to put this one together for my little grandson to have on his bookshelf so he can flip through it whenever he wants, as opposed to the big 12 by 12 ones that are kind of up out of his reach so that he doesn't uh, destroy them all. And there are 20 pages in total. So I did all 20 pages while I was there. And then when I got home, I just typed up the journaling. So at the crop, I just added the papers and cut down the photos to fit and put them into the album. Um, when I got home, and then I did titles. And then when I got home, I did um, all the journaling on one eight and a half by 11 sheet and just printed it all at once, cut it up and added it in. So it has, so these um, patterned papers were old ones that came probably with this album somewhere. Uh, they are EK Success. I couldn't find Cat in the Hat embellishments for scrapbooking anywhere, so I purchased some bookmarks from the dollar store and cut them up a little bit and used them for, like this was, no, this was from a clothing tag, so Marg had tucked some clothing tags in here with the album, and she also gave me the older EK Success papers, which was awesome, super helpful. Um, the These papers, these brighter ones, are printable papers so I printed them I don't have a um, uh, 12 by 12 printer large format is that what they call those I just have an, a regular eight and a half by 11 printer so I printed these at um, eight eight inches eight by eight um, on my eight and a half by 11 paper and I used I will show you what I used because I have it right here I used Epson presentation paper in matte finish um, to print my patterned papers and they came out very nicely but I will be honest with you it took me a little bit of fussing with the printer settings before I got it to come out as clear as I did. So here's another one that's a bookmark and if I can find where I got these papers from I, I actually downloaded them after his birthday before I started a YouTube channel so I will look and see if I can find those. Um, and link them below if I can. Uh, this one is again a bookmark from the dollar store that I cut down. These were some old foam stickers that a friend of mine had in her inventory of scrapbooking supplies that she gave to me. These uh, little embellishment pieces are all from Fancy Pants. These are American Crafts foam stickers that were like a celebrate pack. I think I got them from Peachy Cheap. This was a bookmark as well. I cut down. Um, this was another one of those clothing tags that Marg had tucked in here, so I cut that out uh, and added some twine and whatnot. This is, was a printable, um, again with the thickers from that same thicker sheet. Another bookmark cut down, uh, another bookmark cut down. And this was one of the EK Success patterned papers, and this was a printable paper. EK Success paper, printable paper, cut down bookmark, American Crafts thickers, fancy pants and belt. I used fancy pants uh, little puffy shapes throughout the whole album. They're the only ones I put in here. Um, the stickers that you're seeing, the alphabet stickers that I used, are very old. I I'd have to dig them out to see what company they were from, but it, it they were from like, I don't know, late 90s, early 2000s. I just have so many of them, I thought this was a great way to use them. Um, this again, printable paper. Um, this one was an EK Success paper, more bookmarks cut down. And uh, the, I know this little mini font here was a doodlebug one. 
but again these ones are I don't know late 90s early 2000s I don't know where this chalkboard font is from these um, word puffies that I you might have saw on some other pages too they were from Jen Hadfield I believe yeah so that turned out great that was a 20 page mini album that I did in the month of May then the following day after my uh, condo crop, I went to, um, not went to, because I did it at home, but um, Jennifer Edwardson did her um, use your own product weekend. And so I was doing that. And I'm seeing that some of these are coming off. So I'm just going to add some glue. Uh, so this was the I don't know what order the layouts came in, but this is one of them. And this is, I did, uh, I need to finish up my son's school album. He graduated last year and I still haven't done it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm getting around to it, okay? Getting there. Um, so this one was one of hers and I really liked the, um, the different pat use of patterned papers. I used a Pink Fresh collection for this one called Life Noted. Now, let me, I'm just gonna cover up some pictures here. My son is not, he's like, he's wearing a blanket, but not a shirt, so I'm sure he wouldn't want me to show that on here. Anyway, um, this is a homeschooling one from 2020 when we went online and it says down here forecast for today unproductive with a chance of a nap and it's just of him doing his work at the table i don't know and i just wrote the media is calling it a new normal well i'm sorry but there's nothing normal about a high school student learning at the kitchen table in his blanket not being allowed to socialize no extracurriculars no parties no part-time job no sports we all have hope that aiden's grade 12 year will be different but there's no certainty yet anything right now so this was his grade 11 year so there was that one i think that'll be an important part of his school album and then i have a little <laughs> one for amelia's first um, saint patrick's day and i used simple stories charmed i had bought an absolute ton of this in a package at a garage sale and I couldn't believe how much was inside of there but anyways I'm finally getting towards the end of it here is another one about COVID times this one is about our Easter and a quarantine Easter gatherings band and it was just about how we spent our day and this was another UYOP layout with the hexagons and I use she used like a combo of punches and whatever and I just used uh, punches for mine for my hexagons and the collection I used for this one was called free bird by I think by photo play so that was the four single page layouts and then we did a double page at the end this one again was all pink fresh and it was um, a family photo shoot so the photographer for this one was Rachel Bowman photography that's who is responsible for these beautiful photos of my son and his family okay so the next thing that I got around to was I needed like a break away from all of the planning and stuff uh, for the funeral and so I took a little bit of time to complete some sketch challenges online this one was the creative scrapbooker magazine sketchy challenge and I had this all like laid out on my desk ready to go there was paper and photos and I knew what I wanted to do I just hadn't done it so it was a real um, easy way to just sit at my desk and do something a little bit different for a couple of hours so this is what I did um, there's a video for this one if you're interested you can look it up it is the yeah creative scrapbooker magazine sketchy challenge layout for the month of May and I used a basic gray collection. I think it's called Oxford. And then I did the Scrapbook Generation uh, Sketch Support by Allison Davis. Um, as you can see, this is bent because this fell off the shelf where I stack my layouts after they're finished. So 
hoping once it's in an album it won't be as noticeable. But there's also a video for this one. Okay, so this that was another sketch challenge. This is sketches free as well. I will link it below. And the very last thing I have to show you is um, I did some pocket pages for my granddaughter's album. So I did not do this page this month. This was done a while ago, but what I did do is the back side. I needed to fill in the back side of it. So here is the back side of it. So that I finished. So one pocket page. And then I did this double pager here. Um, this is basically her second month. And so my grandson's album was very big. I shouldn't say album. Albums were a bit excessive. And so for her album, I'm trying a little bit of a different format where I take some of these smaller stories, smaller things, and I'm compiling a bunch of information to add to a pocket page. And then I did not do this side, but I did do this side. So what is that? One, two, three, four pocket pages. And they turned out great. And for this one, I'm using a Simple Stories, really old Simple Stories. Um, and I can't remember what it's called, Baby something. But it's a baby themed collection. Not available in stores anymore, it's, it's old. Picked it up also at a garage sale. So that, in case you were wanting to know, um, that concludes the, um, the May layouts that I got to, and I did six double page 12 by 24 layouts, 10 single page 12 by 12s, 20 single page 8 by 8s, and four 12 by 12 pocket pages, which adds up to a total of 40 layouts, or if you're counting just pages, that is a total of 46 pages. So I did a ton of scrapbooking in the month of May. Uh, I felt like I was very prolific, although I did not do a ton of recording. And I did, I think, only two layouts in the last maybe 10 days of the month of May. So it was all crammed in there towards the beginning of the month, I guess. All right, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click that like button to give me a thumbs up. Hit the show more button under the video description if you'd like to find links to the, some of the things that we talked about today. And if you have a question or a comment, please leave it down below and I will get back to you just as soon as I can. If you would like to see more of my videos, it would make my day to have you as a subscriber. Just click the subscribe button and be sure to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when a new video goes up. Have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.